beautiful creatures of the world and welcome back to Coffee with Carrie Lynn. It is a beautiful but breezy day in the Crown of Maine in the Great White North up along the Canadian border, but we don't care because it's March and it's sunny and we're having a good time. Yesterday we got four to six inches. Himself and I sat by the wood stove. We had some coffee. I made us some nice little matcha lattes. Oh yeah, baby, we had a good time. And I did some knitting and he did some reading and we got the final version of the fiber studio down on paper. And we're going to be taking you guys to the lumber yard very shortly. Um, and the lumber yard is not my favorite place because the prices keep going up and up and up. So we're going to be going to secure our lumber very shortly. And I'll take you guys along with me. You can see all the irritation and the looks, the looks when I'm told that things went up by a dollar. Seriously. I also started today the spring wreath. Yes, I did. Everybody watches my front door for the blooming spring wreath. We're farm people. We live in rural America. There's not much to do. People watch my yard because they like seeing the turkeys in the yard. And they watch the door because we have the blooming wreath. And we entertain everybody with the, with the wreath. And the neighbors love it. And everybody, it just, it tickles everybody. It's a do-it-yourself project, but... It tickles everybody. We find joy in the small pleasures of life in rural America. We're not so burdened and so weighted like y'all city folk are. So what I do is in mid-January, I take down the Christmas swag and I put up a bare grapevine wreath and I put a big old bow on it and I make it sit there. And then come end of February, everybody's kind of watching. And then I go to the bucket of quarter store and I get the little, little fake flowers and then every couple days in March, once a week, depends on how feisty I am, I add flowers to the wreath. And by spring, we have a fully bloomed wreath on the front door. And it just gives everybody a kick. A lot of city people won't understand. <laughs> but if you live in rural America, you know what I mean. What are we going to talk about today on Coffee Talk? Well, I wish we could talk about the simple times, lady and, ladies and gentlemen, but we're not. We're not going to. Uh, we're going to talk about the impolite thing that is going to happen to all of us because it's already happening over in the UK. I'm not going to use the words of polite society. Nay, nay. I'm going to use the words of reality and what is coming at us. We are going to talk about our pantry and we're going to talk about food, but we are going to talk about it in a slightly different light than we have been. I have been Willy frickin' Wonka and I have been sugarcoating things because I know things hurt people's brains and friends and family, they get on me all the time. Why do you post this stuff on your personal Facebook? Keep it on YouTube where we don't have to see it. Because I want everybody to survive and thrive. That's why I talk about it. I was told the other day by a family member that because I do push this line, because I do push this ticket often, and I do get downright feisty with friends and family, which I don't really do on YouTube, because you know what you can say today, you can't say tomorrow. So we will be putting up a once a week rumble. I'll put everything in the description when we do. And you guys can go over and watch some real views without double speak, without idiot talk, without talking upside down and around subjects. It'll just be plain talk on Rumble because still over there it can be done. But over here, not so much. And I really, because I'm not monetized, but I don't want my channel shut down. I don't want my videos removed. So, because I, you know, I just feel that if I can just reach one person on any format, I will play by the rules on that format to reach that one person person in this world that the light bulb moment happens to just by listening to my screechy little voice. I'm here to get everybody to think critically. If you were of the generation that learned critical thinking skills in school, I need you to get back to that. That's why I am here. I'm here to throw out ideas, to share ideas with you, to share my opinions of things. You don't have to agree with my opinions. You don't have to like my ideas. I just want you to think about things rationally. If you have not been taught critical thinking skills in school, if you're one of those generations, I will ask you to listen to what people say, the people around you, listen to what they say. And I need you to sort out the information through your common sense. 
the common sense God and granny gave you, I need you to use your common sense. If it doesn't sound right, it's not right. If it sounds okay, you might want to investigate it a little further, but you know, if it sounds plausible to you, you can kind of hedge in that direction. What we're going to talk about today, we're not going to talk about it in terms of polite society. We are not going to use the words food storage. We use that in polite society. We're not going to use the word famine. That kind of covers up things. These are polite words. We're going to use what it, the word that it really is. It's starvation. And starvation is coming, ladies and gentlemen. This is not to scare you. This is not to irk you. This is not to upset you. It is reality. It is fact. Over in the UK, they are already rationing people at the grocery store on fresh produce. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you live in the UK and you go into the grocery store, there are signs in the grocery store that say limit certain amount of poundage on your fruits and vegetables. You can't buy no more than that. Do you remember the limitations we had here, ladies and gentlemen, 2020, 2021? You walked into the market. And on the shelf was the sign that said, limit two cases of water, limit two packages of toilet paper, limit two dozen worth of eggs, limit one gallon of milk. Remember that? Over in Europe, they are rationing fresh fruits and vegetables because there is a fertilizer shortage. And as a result, the farmers cannot grow the food without the chemical. They can't get the yield. We live in ag country here. We live in the potato capital of Maine. Yes, we do. The soil is so destroyed because of the chemicals that are in the soil that they've used over the years. This is a harsh reality that if the farmers up here do not use the chemicals and they do not use the fertilizers, they do not get a yield. Facts. The soil is dead and dying facts. They're not growing organic. They're not recalibrating the soil with organic matter. They're just adding chemicals on there to grow the potato. And as a result, years and years of doing this has resulted in crappy soil. And I will be taking you to some fields. I'll be taking you to some, some fields and I will be showing you the difference between built up thriving organic soil and commercial soil. So we'll be doing that coming right up. End of spring, beginning of summer. And I'll, I'll show you the difference. It's, it's amazing. It, it'll blow your mind when people see the commercial soil against soil that has been built up and organic. Absolute. It's two different, it's two different birds. But until then, we're going to talk about the starvation. If they're rationing in Europe, they're going to ration here. They already, I mean, they already did it. Everybody is already now used to going to the store and seeing a limit sign. We got used to standing outside of stores 175 feet apart, put a mask on, go see Dr. John Campbell's YouTube because he has the study on his YouTube and he has apologized to the world because he did push masks as well. The masks didn't work. So it turns out, and there's, there's a lot of topics on the rumble, so it turns out that the cure for the virus was worse than catching the damn virus. That's where all the paperwork's coming out. All the paperwork, medical, certified, peer-reviewed medical information, medical papers are coming out. Also where we all said that the virus originated from, well, this is the biggest, suckiest, most effed up, I told you so, in my lifetime. And now we're facing starvation. Ladies and gentlemen, if they're rationing in the UK, they're going to ration here. You need right away, right now, I'm not talking by the end of the weekend. I'm talking at the beginning of the weekend. You need to get your ass to the store and you need to buy two weeks worth of food if you don't have it. Yes, you do. Get two weeks worth of food and water in your house if you don't have it to accommodate your family. I'm not being nice about it anymore. It's not for storms. It's not for the crappy New England weather. It's not for the hurricanes. It's not for the blizzards. It's not for the ice storms. It is because there is going to be a lack of food, a lack of fresh food coming to a grocery store near you. And your grocer is going to be telling you how much you can and cannot have. 
after you get your two weeks worth of food, I don't want you to miss a beat. I don't want you to take a breath. I want you to get three months worth of food in your house. After you get your three months worth of food in the house, I don't want you to stop there. I want you to get six months in your house because you are going to need it, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a scare tactic. We don't do that here. We don't use fear prawn. No, we don't. I tell you the truth, the whole truth, and only the truth. As I read it on the news. Remember, I am a news junkie. I run a, almost a 24-hour news cycle. I barely watch anything that has nothing to do with the news. It's a very rare moment that I sit down and watch something that will tickle my brain instead of hurt it. And I do this because I can disseminate the information and get it out to you guys so that you guys can watch movies and you guys can watch TV and your favorite TV shows and then come here, jump on here when I upload videos to see what I have found that you need to know about. That's how this works. This is what we're doing because we're homesteaders. We need to pay attention. We need to pay attention not only to our homesteading lifestyle. We need to pay attention not only to our land. We need to pay attention that we are living within the cycle of Mother Nature. But we also need to pay attention to events that are happening in our country and around the world because they also affect us. The semi-self-sufficient to the self-sufficient. They impact our lives greatly. And a lot of people in this country are hardly prepared. I had a family member call me uh, this week and said, because I keep doing this on Facebook. My Facebook friends and family are not happy with what I keep it on YouTube, Carrie. But because of my, and I'm not nice. I, I'm nice here. I'm not nice over there. Um, I do not sugarcoat things over there because they're friends and family and I can have it out with them, but good. However, I don't want to hurt the general masses brains. You know, I don't want to make people feel like shit right up until now. Uh, because my goal is to get people to survive, but not only to survive, but to thrive through the catastrophes that are going to come at us one after the, it's going to be a wave of catastrophes, ladies and gentlemen, just like when you go stand by the ocean, the waves come in, they go out, the next one breaks. That's how this is going to work. And it is going to assault you mentally, emotionally, physically, because they don't want you thinking clearly. They don't want you thinking straight. It does not serve the interest and the purpose, whatever that may be. After you get your six months worth of food, I want you to take one little quick breath. And then I want you to get one year's worth of food in your house. And right after you've done that, you, you start working on year two. Absolutely. That's what I want you to do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I want you to do. Take that income tax check and do not go buy the 190 inch television on sale at Walmart. Put it into food because you can't eat your TV, ladies and gentlemen. Whether you know it or not, you can't eat your TV. What happens overseas happens here. Shit rolls downhill. And it's not going to be bothering the people at the top. It's going to be bothering the people at the bottom. You and me. Just like it did during World War II. My grandmother used to tell a fantastic story about World War II. The men and women in this country on the home front, they suffered greatly on the home front. They gave up willingly, patriotically, but they suffered greatly on the home front. Butter. Butter was a big deal for my grandmother. Um, they rationed, but they rationed the butter. The butter went overseas to grease the American GI guns. Did you know that? was lubrication for guns. While men, women, and children of all ages were starving in this country. Remember, the depression. The depression took a lot out of them. They had ration tickets. You go to the grocer. You go to the butcher. You go to the baker. You push the ticket over the counter. They give you what you needed and only what you needed. The butter went overseas to lubricate ammunition. There you go. Nobody cares. Nobody's coming to help you. Nobody ever cared. Nobody ever came and helped you. Nobody. That's the takeaway lesson. You need to get at least semi-self-sufficient so that you don't have such a hard time when we got to line up again in front of the store and limit on our fresh produce. Because, you know, we're the ones that have to look our children, our grandchildren in the eye and say, 
we just can't buy two apples. We can only buy one. So says the sign. It's happened in this country before rationing and it will happen again. And it's happened in Europe and it is happening again in the UK. What comes around goes around. What's old is new again, ladies and gentlemen. I need you to prepare. I need you to put every dime you can in food storage. Because what's coming at you is going to be incredible. It's going to be horrific. They've got, just watch what's going on overseas in Eurasia. They got no fly zones in Moldova. Belarus is angry. Ukraine, they're messed up. Russia's getting pissy. Poland's not so happy. Everybody's itching. And it's going to land right on your kitchen table. Yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not mean to upset you or disturb you too much, but you need to know the facts. You need to get into reality. Beautiful creatures of the world, carpe diem, because nobody promised you a tomorrow. <laughs>